Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about the Canon 40mm f2.8 STM pancake lens for the EF mount and why it is both one of my best lenses and one of my least favourite. Let's get into it. We're going to break this review down into five sections. Lens characteristics, pros, cons, a conclusion, and then a sample gallery at the end, though I will put some images throughout. This lens weighs just 130 grams and extends just about 20 millimeters from the lens mount. It's 68 millimeters wide, so it's easy to see where the name pancake lens comes from. It's compact, it's light, and it's easy to carry around. But they don't taste as good as pancakes. Don't try and eat your lens. It is a plastic built lens based on a metal lens mount and it takes 52 millimeter front filters. This is a prime lens, meaning it does not zoom and it has a fixed focal length of 40 millimeters. This is slightly wider than a standard lens on a full frame camera and the 35 millimeter equivalent field of view when mounted to an APS-C camera from Canon is about 64 millimeters, in which case it's more of a short portrait lens, which is quite nice. I picked this lens up for just 99 euros, used, unboxed, but in excellent condition, and with the front and rear caps. I'm a big fan and advocate of buying used where possible, especially from reputable retailers, because you save so much money. I already own both 35mm and 50mm L series prime lenses. I'm filming on the 35mm now, as I always do. But this lens being so much smaller and lighter means that it has a place where I can't bring these big lenses everywhere. I might be able to justify carrying around the 40 if I was stuck with only one lens, especially on something like the 3000N. Yeah, the EOS 3000N, it's tiny and it pairs well with that camera for that reason. Okay, that's a film camera, but the point stands, you have compact DSLRs as well. The maximum aperture of this lens is f2.8, which lets in plenty of light. It doesn't sound that impressive in a world and an age of f1.2 and f0.95 lenses, but those lenses tend to be literally a dozen times heavier and nearly a dozen times bigger than this lens. And if you consider just their weight, I mean, take the Sony 50mm G Master f1.2 lens that recently came out. Just the caps that go on the front and back of that lens are about one third the weight of this entire lens. And this has a metal lens mount and is full of small glass elements. That's kind of impressive that you can get a lens in such a small light package. And it really puts the niche of pancake lenses into context. They don't go to those crazy fast apertures but they are pretty fast. I mean, most kit zooms that most of us are used to are something like f3.5 to 7.1, f3.5 to 5.6, or maybe a constant f4 maximum aperture. So it's faster. That's already a huge improvement. And not everybody needs f1.2, f1.4, f0.95. I mean, most of us don't actually need that. Maybe we want it, but it's not necessary. And in those cases, f2.8 is usually plenty. The lens focuses down to 25 centimeters at its minimum. It actually says 0.3 meters on the barrel, which I presume is Canon just rounding it to one significant figure. This gives it a maximum reproduction ratio of 1 is to 5.3, which equates to a maximum magnification of 0.19x. So it's not a macro lens by any stretch of the imagination, but it focuses decently close for kind of day-to-day -day standard use. This close focus ability combined with the maximum aperture of f2.8 gives you good potential for nicely out of focus backgrounds when you're close to your subject. The focusing ring is quite small, but it turns very smoothly. The reason it turns so smoothly is because this camera uses a stepping motor or STM system. When Canon has an STM motor in a lens, that means the focus ring is not mechanically linked to the focus gearing system, which we'll talk about a bit more later. Spoilers, I don't like it. I haven't encountered any issues with either flaring or field curvature. Vignetting is present, but fairly minor at f2.8 and stop down to even f4, it's basically a non-issue. Obviously, 
it's small and it's light. That makes it easy to justify carrying around as a just in case kind of lens. I mean, your phone charger probably weighs nearly as much, especially if you don't live in the US and you have a three pin plug. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. <laughs> Here you see it beside my 50 millimeter F1.2 L lens. Now, obviously the 50 millimeter goes all the way down from F2.8 to F1.2, but the 40 millimeter F2.8 pancake lens is so much smaller. That justifies its presence in my drawer, in my collection. Price. It's a very affordable lens. If you buy it new, it's about 250 euros, but don't do that. Buy it used, you can get it for easily 120, 140 euros-ish, or your local equivalent. And as I said, with a bit of hunting around, I got mine for 99, which is an absolute bargain, especially in the world of photography. Lenses aren't cheap. They're precision optical instruments, and buying used is a good way to save a lot of money. This thing can sharp. I knew what I was getting into here, but oh my god, this lens is crazy stupid sharp. Right from f2.8, it's sharp. But once you hit like f5.6, f8, everything is sharp right out to the corners. And that is incredibly impressive for such a small and affordable lens. It's a focus by wire system. I mentioned that the focus ring is not mechanically connected to the focusing system. And what that means is that you are not actually turning anything inside the lens. You're just telling the autofocus motor to move on your behalf. So you don't get any tactile feedback when you're turning the ring. And also if you're shooting video, that can make repeated focus pulls very difficult. I don't like it. I hate it on any system. It's one of my biggest gripes with mirrorless cameras as a platform. Though some cameras and some lenses are getting better at more linear and repeatable focus throws. Fine, I'll give credit where credit's due for that. Or you have options like Fuji's focus clutch lenses, but here, nah, don't like the focusing, don't like it at all. But then again, it's a kind of lens I bring around when I'm doing like snapshots and stuff, so it's not the end of the world. Another side effect of that is, given that the inner barrel extends a little bit further when you focus closely, you cannot turn the focus ring to move it back in when the camera's turned off or when the lens is dismounted from the camera. It needs to be turned on to do that. So if you really want to maintain maximum portability, you have to manually focus back to infinity before you turn off the camera and dismount the lens. Subjectively, 40 millimeters is a pretty boring focal length. I don't like it. I think it feels more like a, a little bit wider than a 50 than it feels a little bit tighter than a 35. I like both 50 and 35, but 40, nah, it's not for me. But for all of the other good reasons about this lens, I'm willing to put up with that and just honestly crop in a little bit to about a 50 millimeter equivalent field of view. I'll take that hidden resolution for that massive boost in portability and sharpness, to be frank. I mean, this lens is sharper at f2.8 than the 50 f1.2. Lastly, this lens, along with a number of other EF lenses, have been discontinued in recent weeks, like more than 20 at this point. So it's going to be harder to find working copies as time goes on. And if your lens breaks, it's either going to be harder to repair through Canon or a third party, or if you're into doing this kind of thing yourself and it is a fairly minor issue, there are going to be fewer working lenses that you can actually scavenge parts from. Not a big thing, but it, this just happened, so I think it's worth mentioning. This has been my review of the Canon EF 40mm f2.8 STM lens. This lens is extremely easy to recommend. If you want maximum portability and excellent sharpness, get this lens, assuming it's a focal length and fast aperture that you want. But if you want a slightly faster maximum aperture and are willing to sacrifice some of the portability, the EF 50mm 1.8 STM is probably a better choice. So thank you for watching and sticking with me to the end of this review. I'd appreciate any support you can give the channel, whether that's by subscribing or by donating to my Patreon, where the tiers start at just one euro per month. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277, where I post new images every single day. So we're going to finish this off with another sample gallery of images that I've taken with this lens over the last while. Spoilers, I didn't mention this, I haven't had this lens for very long, but it has already met and exceeded most of my expectations, so I'm very confident in what I'm saying here. 
I hope you all have a nice day and that you're staying safe. Toodles.